Our next step is going to be to set up the sliding block that is going to be sitting right around the first corner of the level. Now this is a multi-step process. The first thing we're going to do is just get the block into our level. So let's open up the content browser and we'll jump into the static meshes folder and you'll see SM block. Let's go ahead and select that. I'll right click here on the floor right in front of the little corner here. And we're going to add an actor as an interp actor. Now we need to scale this up. So I'm going to set our overall scale to 2.5 and then I'll scale down in Z slightly to 0.75. And you see that fits pretty nicely in between the walls. In fact, that was pretty much dead on. Now I'm going to slide it up so that at least from this view, now notice just kind of so you can get an idea of my orientation, right here is our player start. So I'm going to slide the block up a little bit so that at least in X, it's right here against the edge. That'll give it plenty of space that it can move to kind of get out of the player's way. It's still blocking their initial you know, path when they first come in, though, which is exactly what we want. Okay, now let's get a material assigned to this. So I'm going to jump back into the content browser. Let's go under materials. And we have our M underscore block movers, which I'm just going to drag and drop on here. Now if we deselect and I switch on real time, you'll see that that has a green pulse to it. Okay, so let's close this off. Another important thing to do with a mover of this nature is to double click it. Let's come to collision and make sure we set collide to block all. Now that's all well and good. We've got a mover, it's blocking the player. The next thing we're going to do is set up a trigger volume so that the player can walk up and when they touch that trigger volume they're gonna lose control of their player and then the camera is gonna shift to a new location centered up on the block at which point a UI will come up that the player can use to move the block out of the way now we're not gonna take care of all of that in this video but we can get at least the trigger part taken care of as well as a few other things so with the block selected I'm gonna click on the cube button which is still set to the default 256 cube which is real easy to select in an orthographic view. So I'll select that. And then I'm going to scale it up slightly just so it kind of goes outside the boundaries of our block. And it looks like it could stand to be slid up just a little bit. So I'll slide this up in Z just a bit. All you need it to do is surround this block by a little. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and create a new trigger volume now. That's currently sticking out a lot of units. I'm actually going to scale that back in a little. Let's say right about there. So it's just a few, a few grid spaces away. That's uh, what about 16 to 20 units, give or take. Now I'm going to right-click on my Add Volume button, and let's get, let's put in a dynamic trigger volume. Dynamic because we want this block to move along with us. And I'll go ahead and move the builder brush out of the way. And here is our dynamic trigger volume. Now, with that, we have the bulk of our in-level stuff taken care of. We still have a camera that we're going to place in very shortly. But I want to go ahead and get started with some of the basic uh, kismet. And I want to mention this. The setup that we're building to slide this block is going to be designed in such a way that the architecture is open-ended so that if you're building a level like this on your own and you want to have multiple moving blocks you won't have anywhere near as much uh, work to do in terms of reproducing the result what I mean is we're setting up a flexible system that could potentially handle multiple blocks very easily without you having to take all these nodes that we're having to build and duplicate all of them for a separate block so when you see us doing things like taking this block and storing it as a global variable that we can pass into a specific sequence, that's why we're handling it that way. Okay, now with that taken care of, let's go ahead and select our dynamic trigger volume, and we need to get this attached to our moving block. So we'll open up its properties with F4. We'll lock the properties window, select the block, and we'll come under attachment and make sure that we click the green arrow next to base. So that attaches our trigger to volume, uh, I'm sorry, attaches our trigger volume to the interpactor. Now let's select our trigger volume and jump into Kismet. 
Now, I need to put all of this stuff into a comment block, so let's select all of this. Move it up out of the way. Now, all of this stuff is just to handle our little goal area. So let's hit C, and we'll put in player goal. Now, I'm going to move kind of over here to the side. We've been working pretty vertically so far, so I'm going to start to branch out horizontally a bit. Let's right-click and create a new event. Actually, let's build an event from the dynamic trigger volume that we've got selected. So let's go down to new event from dynamic trigger volume 0, and this will be a touch event. As soon as this comes in, go ahead and switch off force overlapping, and we're going to set max trigger count to 0 so that potentially we could use this block multiple times. Now again, in our setup, we're just going to be moving the one block, and actually we're only going to move it once. But everything that you would need in order to move it several times or move several blocks is already going to be here. So we've got that taken care of. The first thing I want to do is check a variable whose only job is to store whether or not this block is allowed to move. So I'm going to right-click. Let's go to New Condition, Comparison, Compare Bool. And we'll plug the touch into this. Now we just need to create our variable. I'm going to fly over to our global variable section. Right click, create a new variable. That'll be a Boolean. Let's give this a variable name of B can move underscore TV0. And that's, that's short for trigger volume. And I'll set the default value of this to 1. So as soon as we start, the thing can move. Now, of course, over here we need a named variable to associate to that, so we'll right-click, new variable, create a named variable, and we'll call this B can move underscore TD0, and everything links up just fine. Okay, so continuing on with this kind of flexible architecture, at this point, if we can move, the first thing I want to do is pass the appropriate block into our system so that it can be moved. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to end up saying this way too many times, but our overall setup only is, uh, is using one block, but it could use more. So the first thing I'm going to do is pass in a variable that stores our current block. So let's right-click, go to New Action, Set Variable, and this will be an object variable. We're going to plug this into True. Our target is going to be an open-ended global variable into which we could potentially pass any block we wanted to. So let's right-click over here in our global variables area, create a new variable as an object type, and we'll set the variable name to moving block. Now back over here, we need a new variable to call on that. So this will be a named variable and we'll set the variable name to moving block. So that'll be the target, but what are we going to set as the value? Well, let's close Kismet for a minute. Make sure you have the actual moving block interp actor selected. Back here inside of Kismet, we'll just right-click on the value input and set this to interp actor 3. So if they touch volume 0, we're going to be sending it moving block interp actor 3. All right, now at this point, we have fed in the appropriate block that is going to need to move. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and stop the video, and then we'll continue with the setup from here. Now, the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is how we can take control away from the player, how we can shift over to a new camera. All of that is coming up. So for now, go ahead and save your level, and then we'll continue from here.